Hey Jim. So today I'm going to be showing y'all how to do a traditional freestyle. And what I mean by traditional is a traditional Halloween freestyle, which is like orange, black, white, traditional Halloween colors, you know? <laughs> So to start out my freestyles, I pull out all the colors that I'm going to use for that freestyle. Because I know sometimes we can have a lot of thoughts going in our head. So I just have certain colors pulled out. Just those certain colors. Now to make this process easier, what you want to do is open all the acrylics that you're going to use and kind of put them in a group. So it's easier for you to see them and you can think about where you want to place them as you're going. So for my pinky nail, I decided to do the glitter. Now, with the glitter, with this kind of glitter, it's kind of like a loose glitter mixed with powder. Don't ask me where I got this from because I made this like a long time ago with a whole bunch of stuff. The good thing with glitter is you only have to put a thin amount because you're going to encapsulate it. You don't want to build a apex with glitter. Yeah, no. Because once you encapsulate it, that's when you're going to build the structure of the nail now as a beginner with placing the beads you will want to place as many beads as you need to to get a smooth application me i've been doing this for a while i still place as many beads as i need i don't go by a certain amount like three two one yeah no just place as many as you need to get a smooth application it honestly doesn't matter as long as the nails are smooth now the first bead i do place it where the nail tip will start obviously this is a practice hand so she really don't have no nail tips on so just place it where the nail tip will start to where it can start forming the apex Now for my ring finger, the cover powder that I'm using by Valentino is called Prettiest Nude. This one is really pretty. I noticed that some of their colors are a little opaque, but not this one. I think it was just the one that I had got. I had got um, Bad and Bougie. That one is more on the opaque side. And I was like, ooh, is all of the acrylics like this? But no, it's just that one. So... I'm going to put the bead down. The good thing with their beads is I noticed that they're easier to drag down. Because some products, when you drag it down like how I'm doing right now, they separate. And it just makes <laughs> everything so difficult. Once you drag the bead down and you see like a little extra come off at the end, instead of you cutting it off and then wasting it, you can literally just push it up with your brush and feather it off to where it will thicken up the tip of your nail. When you drag it down the second time... The bead is already dried and set, so that little extra that comes off, eh, maybe it needs to come off because the tip is already thick now. <laughs> now, when you place your second bead, it can be more on the wetter side because you want it to feather down and to blend in with the first bead that you just put down. And always make sure you push your bead in because you want to maintain that shape because when it comes to filing, you don't want to be sitting there filing all day. That's definitely going to take up too much time and just feather the bead on down and just continue to clean up the sides of the nail. And make sure as you're doing the nail, you're constantly checking the side profile of the nail because just because it looks good from the top doesn't mean it looks good from the side. <laughs> now, the last two beads, you want them to be more on the drier side. And I know y'all can't see, but every time I pick up a bead, I'm drying it off on my uh, paper towel because you don't want to place the bead down and then it's running everywhere dripping off the nail yeah too much going on so with these two beads you want to build the apex and you want the apex to stay so therefore the bead is going to be more on the drier side because you want that apex to stay right and plus you don't want the acrylics to be going everywhere and making a mess now with placing the cuticle bead I notice <laughs> that it is 
very much easier instead of you trying to feather the bead at the cuticle, you know, get it to be flush. It's easier to just place it down and push it towards the cuticle. Because, trust me, learn from me. I used to be the person trying to, like, feather it off at the cuticle to where it looks seamless. But it's kind of like you're working against the product when literally the product does it for you. You just have to know how to work with it. So you could just could take the products and push it towards the cuticle and point your finger down. That's the key. Let gravity do the work. I heard people say that so much and I actually tried it and it was so much easier. Just let gravity do the work. It's going to automatically come down. Now for my favorite nail. <laughs> so the glitter ombre. We're going to pick up the bead of the glitter. You're going to place it down on the nail. Right? You're going to place it down on the nail. <laughs> now when you see that your bead is a little too runny, you literally just have to push it up. Like, you see what I'm doing right now? You're just taking a bead and just pushing it up and then you can pull it down. Because if you try to pull it down right now, yeah, no, all that is going to be on the paper towel, and then it's just going to be a waste of your time. I'm using patent motions right now because I don't want my glitter to be on the napkin. <laughs> I want it to be on the nail. <laughs> I love this glitter. So right now I'm just doing patent motions because I don't want to pull it down and then have to, you know, wipe it on the paper towel. I was fighting for my life trying to get this tip of the nail covered with this glitter like look at me y'all i'm trying i'm trying <laughs> now with doing my ombre i like for the bead to be more on the drier side i find that it blends better and more easier especially for somebody who's just starting out doing ombre because when the bead is more wetter it's literally going to slide down the whole nail. You're going to drag it down the whole nail. And now guess what? The color that you just blended has nude in it. Yeah, and the shit's not kicked. So you're just going to take the nude and just feather the end of the bead. And boom, you got your perfect ombre. Now, I would not advise dragging down the whole bead. Just feather the end of it. Because if you drag down the whole bead... It can cause the whole bead to blend in with the other color at the bottom. If you want your glitter ombre to pop a little more, just watch this little trick. So you're going to wet the nail a little bit where the glitter meets the nude. You're going to grab a little bit of your glitter and you're going to place it right there. And you're going to literally feather it up to where it blends in with the nude. Not all the way to the top of the nail, but... To where it kind of looks like the glitter is like trickling down. I think that looks really pretty and emphasizes the glitter more than how it was before. You know, give it a little touch. Y'all, I wasn't even going to put this part of the video in here. That's how bad it was. <laughs> this part of the video is me attempting to blend the hardest color on the this faith of faith <laughs> face of nail earth black <laughs> so do it all i can say is um i tried <laughs> i should get an a for effort <laughs> now don't be looking at this like oh, she don't know what she's doing but when i tell y'all I have never ombre black before. This is like my first attempt to do that. I don't ombre every other color under the sun. But black, yeah. You take the cake. You can have that. See, I should have took the hint that this wasn't going to go well when this beat wasn't acting right. And honestly, I don't have anything else to say. 
Y'all can just watch it. <laughs> Y'all can just watch it while I go hide. Y'all thought it could get any worse, sir? <laughs> no. So, let me tell y'all what was going through my head. I thought, since I added this little bit of black, I can fade it up, you know, so it could blend into the nude. <laughs> the black started merging into the nude. It started going, in, and not in a good way. Not in a good ombre way. Like, it literally started turning the nude gray. So I was like, all right, if I wipe some of that off and feather this little bit up, you know, it, it's going to solve everything. It's going to help. Oh, look how bad. At this point, I was over it. I was over it. Look, look at how I'm swiping this. I Like, I know I didn't fucked up. Look. <laughs> y'all. So y'all know what I did? I was like, yeah. I slap a little glitter on here try to cover this up because nothing else is going to help oh my goodness i'm adding more black but y'all to this point i ended up just putting a glitter on top over the ombre i was over it look how oh. i'm just making it worse honestly <laughs> i'm just making it worse i just had to come to my senses and just try to cover that on up because ain't no turning back ain't no turning back <laughs> anyways next <laughs> filing 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 don't you love it it just makes the nails come together honestly i'm filing with a 100 and 180 grip file now what you want to do before you file your clients is season the file and if you don't know what seasoning the file is you're going to rub the file sides together to get that sharp edge off of it. Because if you don't, you're going to cut somebody open. I did it before. Listen to me. <laughs> now, when it comes to filing the tip of the nail, instead of you going straight on like how I'm showing right now, you're going to tilt it at an angle. That is what's going to give you that sharp edge. Don't go straight on. Trust me, I did it <laughs> for years. And I still had to go back in. And file it because it wasn't sharp enough. I'm telling you, once you tilt that file at an angle, and it might not look like it's getting it sharp. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. I'm telling y'all, that angle is the angle. Look at that. Mm. <laughs> y'all better listen to me. Y'all better listen to me. in a cuticle i use the five and one pan of drill bit but for now while i'm on this practice hand i just use my sanding bit now with the sanding bit i do use that but for buffing the nail out before i do any gel polish or anything so you're just going to go from right to left with the drill bit in one direction don't go back and forward you're going to cut somebody <laughs> and then for the body of the nail I kind of go at an angle or I go up and down. It honestly depends on how I'm feeling. If you feel like your drill is going too fast and you don't have any control over it, cut it down. Cut it down. You would rather you move a little slower than you cut somebody and they don't come back.
After you're all done filing, you're going to take a lint-free cotton wipe and you're going to put acetone on it and you're going to wipe each and every one of those nails down because this is honestly what helped me with to stop chipping because my gel polish used to chip off all the time. But once I started doing this and wiping it down with acetone, I didn't have that problem no more. Before you put any gel art on that nail, you're going to matte top coat it. I'm telling y'all, matte top coat it. It's going to make everything go on smoothly, like butter smooth. Matte top coat it, or you can top coat it. It just matter whatever design you're doing it. Honestly, mm, it honestly doesn't matter, honestly. <laughs> For my ring finger, I decided I wanted to do a pumpkin. And I added a little patchwork in there. So for the pumpkin, I took a black and some clear to give me a translucent black. I did that to where the outline of the pumpkin shows once I put the paint over it. So for the pumpkin, you're literally just going to draw three rainbows connected. Line down the side, line down the other side, and three rainbows underneath. If the look you're going for is a regular traditional pumpkin, you could just leave it like how it was. But I wanted more of a 3D look, so I made the same three rainbows that I did on the top and put it behind the top row so the pumpkin could look more lifelike. <laughs> Now with doing little dainty nail art, it's best to have a flash cure because it's easier and faster. I'm mixing orange and a brown together to get that kind of burnt orange color that the glitter is. Right now, when you're first starting out, you do not need to go and buy every single color, every single shade of a gel polish. You can buy the main gel polishes and mix it together. Literally, to get the color that you need. Buy the staples. Save your coins. Trust me, save your coins. I have to learn my lesson. <laughs> save your coins. The Haunted House is a easy, quick design, especially for a beginner nail text. If you're just getting into nail art, you're literally just going to th throw, <laughs> draw random windows, and you're going to cure that and draw buildings everywhere, everywhere. It don't matter. Just draw the buildings. Like, you see how I'm doing? Like, it's in no type of order, no type of fashion, no type of way. Just literally draw the roofs obviously where the windows are <laughs> but draw the roofs to where they connect to the windows and you can trace your little lines to make 
window panels and you're all done and i chose to do the nail matte and then the outline glossy after i finished up on doing the haunted house i started doing the little details to finish off my whole design so we're gonna wrap this on up i added a ghost on my pinky and a spider on my pointer finger you see the little itsy bitsy spider and I gave my ghost a little face. He kind of looks a little creepy, but hey, I'm assuming that's the point. <laughs> it's Halloween. He could look a little creepy on accident. <laughs> Okay, back to this sad case of a thumb. <laughs> so to do these easy drips, you're literally going to take a bunch of gel on the end of your brush, tap it to where the tip of it drips all to the end. This is an easier way and more realistic way to do it than the dotting tool. And you're literally just going to push the brush on the nail. Sorry, all my lighting is like going in and out. Make sure you feather the brush as you get to the tip because you don't want a whole thick strip going up. No, you're going to want to place the bead, the bead, and place the gel down and then lift your brush up and thin it out towards the tip. And when I did drips, I always wonder like, what do you do with the end of the drip? But it honestly looks better when you make it come to a point towards the end. Like it gives a that sleek complete look at the top instead of adding another drip at the end and then it looks awkward and weird you could literally just go across the top of the nail by the cuticle and smooth that out and make it come to a point towards the end of the design <laughs> it's hard to get that out <laughs> so after i finished the top of the nail i'm just going to be adding my little own final touches to the nail like at the end of it where all that negative space is like <laughs> I need something there I, I need something there <laughs> so I just added another little drip coming down like it looks like it's coming you know down from the drips <laughs> and the set is complete so if y'all like more videos like this please comment down below let me know what other nails I can try and I could do it for y'all this is how the set turned out. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And see y'all soon. Bye.